students, I'm Anshul Sharma, your educator for paper 1. Again, I'm coming in front of you with the 30-day challenge that we have, the last lab. In this video, we will be discussing all the PYQs and the concept and with each passing PYQ that I'll show you, I'll explain the concept in a detailed manner. So, in this video as well, we will be discussing about the questions related to teaching aptitude. So, this is the first question right in front of you. The question says, Kohlberg's theory of moral development comprises of the following stages. Obedience orientation, intellectual disability orientation, rewards exchange orientation, law and order orientation, social contract orientation. So, there are these options and it is a multiple, it is a MCQ type of questions, but you have to choose which all stages are there in the Kohlberg theory. So, Kohlberg gave the theory of moral development and in this year exam only, that means in 2022, they asked, the previous year, they asked the same question, right? So, they asked what is moral development and what is the, the stage of uh, Kohlberg's moral development theory, right? So, first of all, the, let me show you the answer. So, the answer is C. So, C means the answer is here. That means A, C, D and E are the correct options and B is not. Because the intellectual disability orientation is not something that Kohlberg talked about. Now, some of you will say, what exactly is Kohlberg's theory? Now, I will show you the answer as well. So, Kohlberg's development. So, he says that the moral development that Kohlberg is talking about, it is a gradual development of an individual. So, whenever we are born, we don't come up with all the set of moral values. We learn those moral values. We learn the value by doing the things on our own. We interact with other personalities. We interact with other students, our parents, etc. And gradually, the moral development is seen. That means it is a social process. All our social attitudes, all our well-being develop in this kind of a manner. So, moral development is a gradual development of an individual's concept of what is right and what is wrong. How do you think that this particular thing is right and what, how do you feel that this is wrong? How do you change your perception? You change it with gradual time. And according to Kohlberg, you cannot miss the stages. So, there are three stages and in each stage you have to further sub stages and you have to go through all these stages to come up with a moral development and this happens with the development of your age as well. So, with each passing age, there are some set of values that you are going to learn. So, there is the consciousness that will develop, there are some religious value, social attitudes and certain behavioral skills and behavioral set of attitudes that you are going to develop. With each passing year, you will develop something new than the previous year. Right? So, this is the Kohlberg theory. This theory is a stage theory. One very important thing. Everything that Kohlberg will say will be according to the different stages. And you will pass from one stage to the next stage and you are never going to jump the stages. So, in other words, everyone goes through the stages subsequently without even skipping one stage. However, the movement through these stages are not that natural. You don't even understand when you are jumping. That is, people do not automatically move from one stage to another or to the next stage, but they become more and more mature. Thus, in the stage development movement occurs when the person notices that there are some inadequacies in his or her present way of coping with these things. So, it is not that with each day you are changing like for example i am saying that i am 16 years old i'll be 17 and i have one set of skill learned this is not the case of course there are human interactions present of course the your cognitive skills your way of dealing with the other person would change you would develop but it is not in your mind where you can distinguish now i am moving from one stage to another it is a gradual process right and that process is when Whenever you feel some dilemma, so there is always a moral dilemma into being. Whenever you feel that there is a moral dilemma, you learn that thing. You learn to do the thing in a different manner. So, whenever 
you will see some inadequacy in whatever you are doing and you see some moral dilemmas, you will do that thing in a different manner. Then with this word dilemma, we will also study about one more theorist and or you can say one more story associated with this word dilemma. So, according to the stage theory, people cannot understand moral reasoning more than one stage ahead. So, gradually they will move. For example, in a person of stage 1, they can understand the stage 2 but not beyond that. Right? So, Kohlberg says that there are 6 stages, 3 broad categories and 2 in each category is there. So, there is pre-conventional moral development. There is stage 1 and stage 2 in the first broader stage. Then we have the conventional moral development. Then we have stage 3 and 4 in it and then we have the post-conventional moral development and then we have the stage 5 and stage 6. Now, let us discuss about level 1 that is the pre-conventional moral stage and where are you at this stage? From 0 to 9 years, somewhat you are in between these stages. So, the first stage in the pre-conventional morality that is obedience and punishment. Now, at this stage, the child will do things because they know that it is obligatory. Otherwise, they will be punished, right? So, in fear, they will do these things. So, especially common in young children, but adults are capable of, because as the adults are capable of doing and, you know, taking the decisions on their own and reasoning, this is very common in the young children. At this stage, the children will see the rules as very fixed and very absolute. So, these are the two words, fixed and absolute. The rules are rigid to them because they know that if they commit a mistake, they will be punished. So, they are moving on the lines of obedience. They obey the rules in order to avoid the punishment. They don't want to get any punishment. It determines a sense of what is right and what is wrong to them and what is punishable and what is not punishable. They obey the superior authority. Here, the superior authority is mostly their parents. They obey their parents, they obey their teachers and this allows the authority to make the rules for them, especially if that authority is in the power. Then it is responsible to making rules and also this can affect the physical well-being of the child. Then we move towards the second stage. Here they are talking about the nativity egoistical stage. So this nativity egoistical stage, at this stage, the moral development. The child amount, the account of the child's individual point of view and judgment is seen. So, there are some kind of moral judgment and individual point of view where it comes up. At this stage of moral development, child account for individual points of view and their judgment. Action based on how they serve the individual needs is seen. Now, at this stage, they'll see that what is my set of view or my point of view, or my set of judgment related to that particular topic. Now, they'll see that, am I right or am I wrong? Now, they're not scared of punishment as such. Reciprocity is possible here. They want to do things if that, that will benefit, uh, you know, they'll get benefit out of it. Then, they are motivated and of course, there is a competitive spirit and I for an I philosophy is followed. An I for an I philosophy is followed and there the child become very self-absorbed and they are not that generous you can say but they are self-absorbed. They believe in equal sharing that everyone gets the same and regardless of the needs. So here the child will have a philosophy that if you do wrong you will get wrong. If you need it you should get it. They don't think about a broader picture but they think about what is needed. So then this line becomes important. They believe in equal sharing. Each and everyone should have it. Equality should be there. They will not see the difference between rich and poor. They will just see that there should be equality. right? So, they, they have limited set of rules and regulations. They believe that the end justify all the means. Do will do what is favorable and what is in their favor. Accepts to be rewarded for every non-selfish deed that they have done. Also, they have this mentality. Okay, I love you. You have to love me with the same depth in which I love you. Right? So, this is their mentality.
then we come to the level 2 this level 2 is the conventional morality and here you have the age of 10 to 15 this is what is a pyq they have already asked which is the stage where good boy good girl syndrome is seen so this is that stage this is the stage 3 of the level 2 and here they say that you always tend to be good boy good girl orientation so in this stage of moral development we are focusing on living up to the social expectations we are living up to the social expectations and the social rules that the society has laid for us all there is an emphasis on the conformity of being extremely nice so i have to look nice i have to act nicely and i want everyone to love me so in the previous two stages first of all i was afraid of being uh, punished then i thought that all are same it should be equality so nothing is right nothing is wrong but here now in the stage 2 or you can say the stage 3 of level 2 i believe that it is very imperative for each and every one to look nice it is very important for me that i become a people pleaser i cannot say no to anyone i have to act as good as possible finds peer approval very important i think that it is very important that i become nice i consider how the choices will influence my relationships how good relationships are created my peer group will become more and more important for me it feels that i have good intentions and all these important deeds, uh, deeds and all these things are done so that i get benefit out of it right and begins to put himself first then the other person and also they start putting themselves they uh, begin to put themselves in the shoes of other to think what other perceive that means at this stage they also have sympathy and empathy so what is the difference between sympathy and empathy sympathy is you actually sympathize with someone you know that they are in pain but empathy means you put yourself in the shoes of another person you know that if you are at that position it would be hurtful right so this is this stage you try to be as good as possible now in stage four now you will start thinking about the law and the social order at this stage of moral development people begin to consider society as a whole now here you're not selfish here you think about the greater good of the society so you stop being selfish you stop big uh, you know you actually thinking you're actually thinking about the whole society so at this stage of moral development people begin to consider society as a whole when making judgments i see the whole world the focus is on maintaining the law and order and i will focus on the different rules and doing my duty properly now i am the citizen of india i have this kind of duty i have to do it i am a teacher i have this duty i have to do it this is the mentality of these people they know the set of rules and regulations they are very much an idealist kind of people and they'll follow that thing they also respect the authority it is the duty of the doer who believes and they also believe in the rigid rules that should not be changed so here at this stage the rules cannot change they are rigid one word you have to remember the law and social order will help them become a rigid person then respects the authority and obeys what is the question without uh, what is actually being done without questioning they will obey and respect the authority and will obey them so without any question without any bickering i will try to obey the rules and the regulations and the rigid rules as well i will do my duty diligently support the rights of the majority without concerning about the minority now what is it because they're an idealist they'll see the half picture the one that everyone is following so they don't pay heed to the minority but to the majority and they are also part of the 80 percent of the population this is also important so they pay more attention to what is relevant rather than what is right for everyone then comes the third stage that is the post conventional morality here you are 16 plus so the first is legislative social contract at this stage people begin to account for different opinions and different values here they will understand that yes there can be some people with some set of knowledge and skills and values 
and there can be someone who is totally different. There can be different values, opinions and beliefs of the other people. The rules of the law are important for maintaining a society, but the members of the society should agree. So, in the previous stage, they were blindly follow, following what the society was saying. But here, they will think that what is right and what is wrong. In what, according to the society, you are working, but the people of the society should also be uh, happy and the standards should be met. And they are motivated by the belief in the greatest good of all. So, they have this utilitarian approach now that they believe in the greatest good of everyone. All the number of people that are present here should have the goodness in them, should be happy, should be motivated. They believe in the consciousness. They believe that uh, there should be everyone who agrees, there should be the rule of majority of the people. They respect the right of the minority as well. So, here they know what is right and wrong. They know how the rights of the individuals are to be met. Now, they believe in the change of the law is only possible when you, dug, when you dig deep inside the system. So, these are those kind of people who know that each and every one who are the part of the group should be happy. Now, comes the sixth stage that is under the third stage or third level only that is the universal ethical principles. The Kohlberg's final level of moral reasoning is based upon the universal ethical principle and abstract reasoning. At this point of time, because you have learned everything, it's like memory level you have achieved, you have gained the facts, figures, done everything to please others. Then you started to please yourself. Then you understand that it is important that you actually see that everyone is happy. Right? When you have done all these stages, at this stage people follow these internalized principles of justice. At the end, they'll understand what exactly is justice. Even if they are in conflict with the rules and regulations, they know what is right. They know the meaning of justice. They believe that there is high moral principles, then just presented in the social rules and customs. So, they know that yes, dowry is a wrong thing. If everyone is doing, you are not blindly following them. You are trying to change everything. You know the meaning of justice. Here, You know what is right and wrong. They are willing to accept the consequence if they disobey the social rule he or she has rejected. So, they are willing that yes, I know that if I disobey the social rules of the society, I will be the one alone. And they are leaders. They know that I can stand alone. They believe in the dignity of humanity. They are not scared to move alone. They are not scared that at this point of time, they have to fight with another person. They value their judgment. So, with while we are actually studying Kohlberg, there was this scientist who, uh, you know, there is Hens dilemma that come into play. So, Kohlberg was reading this story about Hens dilemma where, from where he started to write about this moral development theory. And there are so many shortcomings in this theory because someone says that how do you categorize what is morality? There are theorists who have been questioning all these theories of Kohlberg and then we have the hen's dilemma. So, you can write down, you know, just leave your pens and listen to the story I am going to tell you and this is the story of the hen's dilemma. So, there was a woman who was near death and there was a special kind of cancer uh, from which she was suffering. But this woman had a husband and that husband had this zeal that, she, that he has to protect uh, his wife. But the doctor said that the woman can only be protected, can only be saved if she has this particular kind of drug that is needed. But of course, that drug was too expensive. So, a woman was near death and she was suffering from special kind of cancer. There was one drug that the doctor thought can only save her. It was in the form of this radium that a druggist who was living in the same town had recently discovered. So, this was a drug that was recently discovered. And only that drug could save the life of that woman. The drug was too expensive and the druggist was actually charging 10 times than what is the cost of the drug. So, because the drug was very important and of course, it took a lot of time to make or maybe it, he was the only one who made it, he was charging a lot. So, what happened 
So the husband said that uh, yes, it can be that the you know you have to pay dollar two hundred for that uh, medicine. But the husband said that I can I just don't have money. We are very poor. I can even pay you uh, this money after some time, or you know in installments you can take it from me, or you can at least give me some concession, or uh, please try to help me. But outright rejection was what he got. So the druggist was not able to help him because he said that this is uh, a very important drug and I cannot help you. And not even half the amount, or not even half. That means not even hundred dollar was uh, the husband capable of collecting. Because he knew that he is so poor and he can never collect that money. So what happened? He just decided that he has to buy that drug no matter what. So he decided to steal that drug. Now, do you think Hens was correct? Because he had no option. He tried everything. He just wanted to save the life of his love, love of his life, right? So was he correct or not? So this is what Kohlberg was actually talking about. All the theorists also. challenge this somewhere or the other that what do you think is morality so it is a very arbitrary concept and for all of us the question or you can say the question of morality is different for each and every one of us so this was kohlberg's theory and this is what is will summarize everything so this is the first level this is the second level and then we have the third level and we have the two stages in each level so we have level 1 that is the pre conventional when you are younger than 6 then we have 7 to 11 or you can say the conventional level then we have the post conventional level so you obey the rules to avoid the punishment then the punishment and obedience orientation is seen then to have your favors return is what is your notion then you have native hedonism and you confront to get reward right then what is happening in stage 3 what will happen in step 3 good boy and good girl morality is their conformity to avoid all the disapproval or dislikes is there then you have step 4 and in this you avoid all the censorship of the authority in step 5 you conform to maintain the societal goals and you also emphasize on individual rights in step 6 at the end you know that there are some individual set of rules and there are some values that i have to follow and they are my set of values that does not mean that you have to do that if you if i feel something is wrong i'll outrightly reject that thing i understood that no saying no is so important so these are the uh, this is actually the stages that kohlberg talked about now the second question again we have a match the following question this is list 1 and this is list 2 there are some set of skills that you have to match with howard gardner's multiple intelligence right so i'll read linguistic skills logical skills that is of course related to mathematics musical and naturalist skills so there is ability to appreciate and to produce rhythm tone pitch and timbre there and then we have the ability to handle all the chaining effects and the reasoning then we have the ability to recognize the plants and the animals and then we have sensitivity to all to differentiate between the different functions of language now i'll show you the answer the answer is c that means a will be matched with 4 so what is it of course what is linguistic linguistic is knowing about language more so i'll know that i will join a with 4 now is there any option where you see a joined with 4 no that means all the other options would be striked out and you already got your answer but let us join it further b will be matched with second that means your logical reasoning is the ability to handle all these reasonings then music music is when you know about the tones about the pitch etc when you are singing and naturalist would know and would recognize the different amounts of plant the different uh, the different uh, would actually recognize the plants and the animals that we have so this is how you can connect all and uh, all the dots and you can solve the question now let us see the explanation howard gardner's theory of multiple intelligence many of the other theorists said that there is only one kind of intelligence that is the person who score more marks that means iq was uh, the one thing that would decide who is intelligent and who is not but there are other learning as well 
there can be visual learning there can be auditory learning there can be kinesthetics learning these are the different kinds of learning so what is visual when you learn better with looking at the things and what is auditory learning auditory is when you hear things you learn better and what is kinesthetics when you move your body when you do things by your hands by your body you know things better so when you go beyond these three categories you will feel that yes there is potential in each and every one and this is what the theorist harvard gardner said he said none of us is that person who is not intelligent so all of us have one kind or another kind of intelligence and each and every one is intelligent so harvard gardner and i really like this person because yes maybe you're not good with one subject but you're good with another thing that will, that is what he is saying he is saying that each and every one of us are intelligent so today there are about nine main kinds of intelligence about which he is talking so he says that there is verbal and linguistic intelligence when you use the verbal skills the sensitivity of the sounds and the rhythms you already know that then you have the logical skills that is related to mathematics you have ability to actually think conceptually you know about the logical patterns you know about the discrete logic behind everything you know about the abstract concept as well then you have spatial and visual intelligence that means you know about the pictures about the imageries and you learn things better so abstract imagination is really good then you have the bodily kinesthetics intelligence that means the ability to control one's body movements i can control my own body movements and learn things properly then there is musical intelligence you know about the rhythm about the pitch and about the uh, how you have to you're good at singing right you know about the basic skills that are required for singing then there is the interpersonal intelligence so the capacity to detect and to respond those interpersonal skills are one set of things that are very important you know the different mood you can detect how, which person is too motivated you're good when it comes to talking you know how to become uh, you know you know how to gel with the other person then there are intrapersonal skills so you are very self aware that means you have the interpersonal skills you know about the innermost feeling about your value values beliefs and your feelings then and, and your thinking process is also very clear then comes the naturalist intelligence that means you know about the plants animals and the nature and then there is existential intelligence that means you can tackle the problems deep inside you are aware about the things you think about deep questions of human existence what is the meaning of life who am i why do we die why do why are we here so these kind of questions pop in your mind right so this is what harvard gardner said that there is multiple intelligence each and every one of us is a intelligent human being now this is one question that is asked in a different manner in our paper as well and in this manner also so they can directly ask in a match the following thing that who is the one person who talked about education or who is this person who said this statement or it can also be match the following now this question exactly the same question was asked in the case set also that means sometimes set questions are also repeated in the net paper that is why doing all these questions will only benefit you that is why i got this question so the education is the manifestation of perception uh, of perfection already in man so this was a statement and they directly asked who said this statement now again i would say that knowing who said it is a very tough task a very uh, hard uh, nut to crack that you directly know and you remember that uh, statement but if you keep on revising you can of course remember all these things but they can ask anything so it is important that you know about the philosophies of all these people and these are important people important names as well so today before uh, dealing the explanation first let us see that c is the right answer so this statement is swami vivekanand that means he said that education is the manifestation of perfection already in man now let us see the explanation and i have different statements that all of them have contributed to somewhere or another so you after reading all these things you will understand that what is 
uh, this person talking about? What is basically one thing that they believe in? Because there are set of skills, there are set of rules and there can be a set of thinking pattern that each and every one of them has. Like Rousseau is the only one who said that negative education is something that can happen. And if you see any related statement to that, you know that it is Rousseau. So then it was easy, it becomes easy to match the question. Now let us see. So first of all, we have M.K. Gandhi. So we have Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi on education. What is his philosophy? Now there are a lot of statements. I will be reading these statements with you. And this is very beneficial because anything can be asked. And past two years, you see one question from these things. Also, the students from education, if your subject is adult education, they definitely get these questions, right? So, you have to take care about all these things. An education which does not teach us to discriminate between the good and the bad, to assimilate the one and eschew the other is the misona. Education should be revolutionized as the answer to everything and of course the wants of the poorest villager instead of answering those of the empirical exploiter. So he is just saying that each and every one should receive education and that you should not discriminate between good and bad. Now he also says that education in the understanding of civil uh, or the citizenship in a short term affair if we are honest and earnest. So you have to be educated and you'll understand the importance of education more if you are honest and you are earnest. Then the basic education links the child whether in the cities or in the village. So basic education is what he is talking about. Nai Talim is what you see Gandhi talking about. It is not education that is the art of drawing out the manhood. It is, the, uh, it is not education the art of drawing out full manhood of the children under training and question mark. That means definitely education is what shapes the personality of a human being. Literacy in itself is no education. First of all, literacy is not only get, getting, uh, getting educated or literacy. If you know how to read, write is not only education. You have to look at the overall personality. Here he is talking about the holistic growth of a person. Literacy is not the end of everything. It is not the beginning. Literacy education should follow the education of the hand. The one gift that is visibly distinguished. So you have to do things by your hands. The real education has to draw out the best that is there hidden inside the boy and a girl. The true education must correspond to the surrounding circumstances. So in all these statements, what do you think he is talking about? He is telling about the Naitali, education for everyone, rich and poor, no discrimination, just let them study. The national education to be truly national must reflect the national condition for the time being. So you have to see that even the poorest of the poor is receiving compulsory education. They can also ask you these things in your higher education. Then the function of Nai Talim, as I was telling you, he is the one who talked about Nai Talim. I believe that religious education must be the sole concern of religious associations. By education, I mean an all-round drawing out of the best thing that is there in the child. That means the all-round development, a body, a mind and a spirit. So, a healthy mind will only reside in a healthy body. This is what he is saying. He is saying that you need education for everyone. By, sp uh, by spiritual training, I mean education of the heart. That means educate everyone. And then I consider writing as a finite art. He is also saying something about art. Then we have Tagore on education. So, according to him, education means enabling the mind to find out that the ultimate truth which is there and this will uh, help them you know conquer everything so this is basically the crux of his statement and you can read this statement it will help you realize the truth is what he is saying the education is one thing that will help you realize the truth the inner light the power inside you can only be ignited if you are educated the aim of education is to bring out perfection of the man by displaying, uh, you know, and by, of course, ushering the light of knowledge in him. It should enable us to lead and compete the life. 
right and then there is the main objective of shanti niketan that he is saying and his main objective of shanti niketan was to cultivate love for nature and of course wisdom in one's own native language and provide freedom to mind and heart and to will and a natural ambience for everyone so again he is saying that the education starts with educating of the hearts education is there and wisdom should be there now what is russo saying russo argues that the proper education is one that does not include constructions created by humans for the purpose of controlling the other humans so he is talking about free will he is talking about the free education you don't have to bound the person basically russo is the philosopher who talks about the nature as well so he is saying we are free spirited let the child learn on their own let them free let them lose in the and don't control them in this atmosphere in this surroundings they learn on their own the nature will teach the humans according to their own nature there are some philosophies like education according to the nature of a child look at the nature of the child education according to the different stages of the child which is the correct stage education from nature man and things and education is the progress and it is the guidance he is the only one who talked about the negative education and he says that russo was the first person who stress on the negative education he states that the most dangerous period in human life lies between the death and the uh, when the child is of 12 years of age hence the education from 5 to 12 should be of a negative effort done by the educator let them be let the child lose and leave them so that they can learn and learn to use their own time properly negative education is the preparation against the social conditions in which the child would live they would understand what they want it consists not only teaching everything but then they learn the virtue as well it would shield the child's heart against the vices this is what he is saying then we have shri aurobindo and he said that various teaching methods like observation self discovery and activity methods sympathy learning by doing discussion method learning by self experience are something that can help you and so this is the overall uh, concept of uh, shri aurobindo but whenever you see the word learning by doing you should be clear that john devi is the one who started to talk about the learning of the learning by doing then we have swami vivekanand and he said that education is not the amount of information that we put into our brain and run against it but you have to undigest all of it to live a life properly so you have to build the proper mankind and the character and you have to assimilate the ideas so broadly you have to remember all these things read all these things and read this table as well so who is the one who is talking about basic education nai taleem basic education vardha education vardha system of education it is mahatma gandhi learning to take place in the nature it is rabindranath tagore who said that you learn from the nature as well then you have integral education and integral education is said by shri aurobindo so he talks about integral education focus on spiritual aspects of indian philosophy it is dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan who said that your indian philosophy is also very important we have j krishna murthy who said that education to transform human mind and the last but not the least is john devi who said that there is experimental learning the hands on doing when you experiment things when you do things with your hands you learn things better so these were the few questions that i had for you no one can remember all these statements the motive of this video i'm showing you these names were that you should know the philosophy behind them all of them are mostly saying something same i also know that but you should know the crux with that you can do a heuristic learning you can actually solve the questions by just just using the presence of mind so i hope it was informative and learn the kohlberg stages of moral development and that is being asked and i'm sure there's going to ask this question again and again thank you so much for being a patient listener if you have any problems write it in the comment section thank you so much